So about a year ago, I set out on a mission to build one of the most difficult games of Snake to play. And after about 11 months and 20 something days of procrastinating, I think I finally did it. I think I genuinely built one of the most frustrating games of Snake to play. Take a look. Now after wasting hours of my life building this game and getting super frustrated playing it, I thought to myself, why not build an AI that can actually beat this game, right? I mean, after all, I am a software engineer. Now some of you might be wondering, why even bother with that, right? And to those people I would say, it's for the learning experience, of course. No, but seriously. One of my main goals with this project was to learn more about an extremely powerful concept which is called reinforcement learning and it's essentially a concept that's used in applications ranging from self-driving cars to stock trading bots that try to predict market movements. Reinforcement learning works by taking a machine learning model, we'll call this the brain or the AI, and putting this model in a certain environment. Now for the sake of this video, that environment is going to be the world of Snake. Once we put this model in that environment, we give it certain information about that environment. So this is going to be stuff like the position of the snake, where the food is located, where the walls are, and so on. We then ask our model, what's the next best move that we could possibly take at this point in time? If we like the answer given to us by our model, we reward it. If we don't like the answer, we penalize it. We then repeat this process over and over again. And as time goes by, the model learns from experience and finally learns how to play the game. Anyways, that's the motivation behind this video. So let's get right into it. I'm going to be skipping over how I built the game because personally, I just find that stuff boring. Oh man. Oh jeez, man. Oh, fine. Before we go ahead and build an AI that can actually beat this game, let's quickly take a look at the rules of the game. Rule number one, avoid seekers. At the start of the game, a spawner block will spawn a certain number of seekers after which it disappears. Seekers will chase the snake down and try to kill it by colliding with the head of the snake. The only way to get rid of a seeker is to run from it until it loses all of its energy and dies. Rule number two, avoid obstacles. Obstacles spawn at regular intervals all over the board. The snake needs to avoid them in order to survive. However, every time the snake eats a block of food, a certain number of these obstacles are removed from the board. If the snake is able to eat food fast enough and remove all the obstacles from the board, then they stop spawning completely. Rule number three, eat the food. Just like a traditional game of snake, the objective is to eat as much food as possible and to fill up the board with the entire body of the snake to win. Okay, now that we know the rules of the game, let's go ahead and build Bren. Oh, um, who's Bren? Yeah, that's what I've named the AI that I'm gonna build. And I actually had a pretty interesting conversation with my friend to come up with that name. Hey dude, 
I'm trying to come up with a name for that snake AI that I'm working on. Do you have any ideas for it? Yeah, of course I do. Since this is a video about AI, I think it would be really cool to use one of those AI name generators or even better, build an AI Bren. I think we're going to call him Bren because he's a Bren. Isn't it pronounced Bren? Okay, to start building Bren, we're going to create a reinforcement learning model and give it as much information about the game, including information about the rules of the game and see what happens. Let's go. Alright, I got that working no problems at all. We can see that the training process has started for Bren, so let's come back in a few hours and see what he's learned. After about 4 hours of training, we can see that Bren has developed a severe Bren aneurysm and has decided that the optimal strategy for beating this game is to give up even before trying. So what can we do to fix this? I'm sure that there's a lot of different things we could try and believe me, I did try a lot of different stuff off camera, but the strategy that worked best for me was to split Bren's Bren into three mini Bren's and have each of those Bren's focus on beating a certain aspect of the game. You'll see what I mean. Mini Bren 1's sole purpose in life was to beat all the Seekers by fleeing from them until they run out of energy. Now to do that, I split the board into 4 quadrants and basically trained Mini Bren 1 to flee to the quadrant with the least amount of Seekers in it. And after a few hours of training, this was the result. Pretty cool for such simple training rules, right? Anyways, let's move on to building Mini Brand 2. After Mini Brand 1 clears the board of all seekers, he hands the baton over to Mini Brand 2, who's tasked with clearing the board of all obstacles by eating the food as fast as possible. Now, the implementation for this was relatively simple. I basically trained Mini Brand 2 to go for the food as fast as possible by telling it where the food is, of course, and by also rewarding it for each step that it takes in the direction of the food. I also penalized it for colliding with obstacles. And after a few hours of training, Mini Bren 2 learned to survive long enough to clear all the obstacles. Now let's finally talk about Mini Bren 3. Okay, so the last leg of the game involves clearing a normal game of Snake. Now that's very difficult to do using reinforcement learning and if you go and do some research, you'll find that no one has actually cleared a normal game of Snake using reinforcement learning. At least no one that I could find. So I had the brilliant idea of doing a Control c Control v type of situation with a technique used by others who have built perfect Snake AIs. And that technique is called a Hamiltonian cycle. Now if we break our snake board into a grid like this, 
then a Hamiltonian cycle is essentially a loop that goes through every single cell exactly once. And as long as the entire body of our snake follows this Hamiltonian cycle, it will never die and eventually complete the game. So I went ahead and I implemented this Hamiltonian cycle based Bren. And if you take a closer look, you can see that it is so slow. In fact, it is so slow that if we sped up the game to 60 FPS, which is way beyond playable by any human player, then at that speed it would take the snake over 5 hours to complete the game. Now that's primarily because the goal with this method is to follow the Hamiltonian cycle instead of going for the food like a normal player would. To fix this, I basically gave Mini Bren 3's Bren the ability to take safe shortcuts along the Hamiltonian cycle. Now I define a safe shortcut as a shortcut on our Hamiltonian cycle that'll take our snake straight to the food and prevent it from dying. Now after implementing this safe shortcut method, our Hamiltonian cycle based Bren looked something like this. Now with that, let's combine all three mini brands and see how they fare against the game. 